at that time, uh, having a wife could have helped the prophet in several aspects. It could have helped him uh, from a personal perspective in his his feeling down, companionship, helping him mentally. It could have uh, helped him by taking care of domestic issues, taking care of the children at home. It could have helped him in the sense of the da'wah, in preaching and going forth and, and serving like a, being a backbone to the prophet the way Khadija was. Now, it could have helped him with with intimacy and, and just being having somebody to be intimate with and being close with. Now, if the pro the proposition that Aisha at this time was a six year old child w is absurd because the I mean she could not fulfill a, a child at the age of six. I mean, it's, she couldn't fulfill any of those categories. She, in fact, if anything, she would just be another burden. It's like the Prophet has young children at home. Now he's just brought another child and put a child at home. Who, who, who's going to take care of the children whilst he's trying to earn a living and trying to do all of these things? we got to give a little bit of a background. So in the bottom part, you see Quran chapter 65, verse 4. Now this verse talks about the idda meaning the period where women can't remarry after a divorce. So they know that if they're pregnant or not, right? But the idda, this waiting period, is only applicable if the marriage was consummated, as in Surah Ahzab. Now, in this verse, it says, for women who have no courses, i.e. they are still immature, their idda is also three months. Remember that idda is only applicable if you consummate the marriage. And when you're applying an idda to girls who haven't had their periods because they're too young, you're also implying that you can have consummation with prepubescent children, right? Now, this is not me making this up. If you look on the top left side, Imam Bukhari interprets this exact verse. Literally, he takes the verse and then he says, that this is about the three-month idda of the kids before puberty, قبل البلوغ, before adolescence. So he's being explicit and he uses the marriage of Aisha to Muhammad at the age of six and consummation at nine to think that, okay, this fits the prepubescent sexual intercourse criteria. This is surprising. I haven't read this. Like, I, I didn't notice this before, this part in Arabic. It's interesting that it's not translated, right? Basically, there's, there's two opinions here. Some some Muslims will say that 65 four is talking about those who can no longer menstruate, meaning when you divorce a woman that has no more period, this is what you do. But the tafsir makes it clear that this was the gut. And even the asbab al-nuzul, the, the reason for revelation is recorded that basically someone came to Muhammad and said, in the case of me marrying a woman that has not yet had, you know, a period, how do I divorce her? What's the waiting period? So it's clear from the hadith and the, and the tafsir that this is regarding not, not an old woman, but a, like a, a child, basically. Right? If you look on the right side, top right, that screenshot is from uh, Tabari's history. And Tabari himself writes, as for Aisha, when he married her, she was very young and not yet ready for consummation. They're talking about when she was six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is why he waited. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he determined that six was too young and nine was okay. That's weird. Like <laughs> Exactly. Like how is this is something we have to get a talk about too, where there's this weird perception in the in these Muslim apologist circles that as soon as you start bleeding, it's like a switch. You turn from a child to an adult. It, it doesn't work like That's that. That's not how it works. There are so many phases and so many developmental stages the human body has to go through, right? Ooh. This is about the infamous dolls Aisha used to play with. And Aisha also playing with children. If you look on the left side, the, the name of the chapter, it says children and subchapter says stroking a child's head. And it's talking about it when Aisha used to already be with Muhammad and she used to play with dolls, right? And her friends would come over. Aisha used to play with other kids. They would hide from Muhammad. So the kids would see Muhammad and run away because they were probably scared of what he was doing to their friend Aisha. They're terrified. Right? <laughs> I don't know if we can imply that they were scared of him. I mean, I, I, 
I know a lot of young kids would run away because they're shy or because, you know, it could be the culture where, you know, they don't feel comfortable because there's an adult, adult, <laughs> an adult mm -hmm. and man coming in the room. So they want to, the kids, they're going to run away. They're going to hide. Doesn't mean they're necessarily scared of him. Mm -hmm. um, Unless, unless you think that is implied here, uh, that they were hiding from him because they were scared. <laughs> no, not directly. I think it sounds like he called them and they played with him too. So, you mm -hmm. know, how romantic. <laughs> <He's playing. laughs> uh, <laughs> I, on the right side, though, uh, one thing I want to point out is in the brackets, it says that the playing with the dolls and similar images is forbidden, but it was allowed for Aisha at that time as she was a little girl, not yet reached the age of puberty. So this is from Hazrat Asqalani in Fath al-Bari. Now this guy is a leading commentator, uh, this uh, scholar of Hadith, and he says that after consummation, she still, when she was with Muhammad playing with dolls, she still had not reached the age of puberty. So that is a very Again, interesting- Again, her at six, not necessarily nine, right? No, this is nine because she's because we'll come to some other hadith where she then says years, a few years out, even after that she was an immature girl. Okay. Do you want to say something about the playing with dolls? I mean, I, I don't know any mature women playing with dolls. <laughs> uh, I mean, I could always find like exceptions to the rule, but generally, when yeah, you think about of course, the, there's exceptions. But why like, would they preserve this detail? What do they want to demonstrate about Aisha? Yeah, that she's a kid. Right? She's right? playing with kids. She's playing with, she's dolls. playing with dolls. They just want to reinforce that. <clears throat> you actually found these things for me. Oh, yeah. uh, the oh, yeah. <laughs> highlighted part there. So this is the hadith on the left side. You see from Sahih al-Bukhari when Aisha was accused of cheating on Muhammad, right? And then Muhammad goes to ask a few people what they think of Aisha. And Barira, Aisha's slave girl, uh, says this about her. Uh, yeah, that she is a girl of immature age who sometimes sleeps and leaves the dough for the goats to eat. <laughs> <What the? laughs> now, interesting tidbit. Remember the goat eating the Quran? This is in a different hadith, just magically Randomly. coincides that Aisha used to be clumsy with the goats. <laughs> <laughs> she just left stuff out <laughs> to be eaten. The kids, right? Yeah. Kids. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, yeah. On the right side, though, again, you see Aisha saying herself that I remember the messenger covering me with his rida, like with his shawl, while I was watching the Ethiopians playing in the masjid. And masjid came in Medina while she was living in the masjid with Muhammad until I got bored. And then Aisha says, so you should understand the keenness of young girls to play. So Aisha again tells us that she's a young girl who likes to play. In another hadith, is the same kind of hadith, but just narrated uh, in a different book. It says that he would stand there for my sake till I was the one who departed. So estimate the time a young girl eager for amusement would wait. Uh, so that's Aisha again saying that she was young and she would like to play like girls and with dolls and whatnot. It's sad, yeah. Mm -hmm. Shall I go okay, next slide? Yeah, next slide. And I think this is a very triggering slide because this tells you the story of the day Aisha got married. All right, <clears throat> let's start on the left side. Um, Allah's messenger married me when I was six years old and I was admitted to his house when I was nine. She further said, we went to Medina and I had a tack of fever for a month and my hair had come down to my earlobes. Uh, my mother came to me and I was at that time on a swing along with my playmates. She called me loudly and I went to her and I did not know what she wanted from me. She took a hold of my hand and took me to the door. And as I was saying, ha, ha, as if I was gasping until the agitation of my heart was over. She took me to a house where I had gathered the women of the Ansar. They all blessed me and wished me good luck and said, may you have share in good. My mother entrusted me to them. They washed my head and embellished me and nothing frightened me. Allah's messenger came in there in the morning and I was entrusted to him. It's a, it's a sad, sad little tale. Like Aisha is nine and she's playing on the swing with her friends. They're like, what, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. 
and suddenly her mom grabs her and Aisha has no clue what's going on. Takes her to her house and then she's just kind of confused. She's breathless and then suddenly... Has a panic attack, basically. Yeah, and she's just cleaned up and given away to Muhammad the next day. It's That's how it happened. That's the day she got married. She I don't know if she even had a Valima or not. Eh? After the consummation... They probably did. I'm I trying to recall if I remember that there was some meat and bread being given out. But I don't know if that was for this. I, I'm, I vaguely remember the hadith, but I don't know now. Hmm. How uncomfortable is that, though? Like, everybody knows when you consummated your marriage. Like, that's not... Yeah. That's not like information you want out there. Yeah, this is something interesting. Like how many of the other wives of Muhammad do you find that oh he consummated the marriage like this age or that age or with such right precise away. details? <laughs> I guess there's one or two, but like Aisha is like, yeah, I was six and nine. Six and nine. <laughs> and I, get... I remember. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, that is interesting actually. But I think even like the fact that you have the Walima after it's consummated is kind of weird, right? Yeah, I mean, why would yeah. you celebrate the fact that you're having sex? Like, no, especially with a child. Like now it's official, guys. We've we fucked. Like, <laughs> that's none of your business. Like, You want to just address this comment? Uh, guys, please try to understand there's nothing wrong with early marriage 1400 years ago. Uh, as Abdullah Gandhi was saying, this example of age discrepancy with, with like a nine-year-old and a, how old was he? And 54 it's, at consummation, yeah. yeah. So it's it's like it's quite an extreme ex, you know discrepancy, and even if it was okay back then, the point is we're pointing out that this is not okay. Period, and the fact that Muhammad did it, if he did it, and and this is why we, you know Abdul Gandal is bringing all of this evidence to show that she was indeed actually a child for a grown man to marry a child that plays you know, and this is all the evidence that we're showing. This is a problem. This is actually an issue, right? So that's that's why we're, we're highlighting this. Not we you know we understand that this was a common thing back then. But then, what is Muhammad? A common man? If if that's what you're saying, I'm not you specifically. But if if Muslims are saying he's a common man, okay, then we have no problem with that. He's just another <laughs> grumpy old man that did stupid things, and we should have looked at him at a, as an example for anything. If that's the case, we we agree, right? Yeah, we can definitely look at him at, through a historical viewpoint if that's what you want. But then a lot of stuff goes out the window. Another few points I'd make about the marriage that it doesn't make sense even from a logical perspective, even in the 7th century. Okay. And uh, Muhammad will agree with me because he used that mm -hmm. same reason to reject his daughter being married off to an old guy. We'll see this. It's a hilarious. Why did Muhammad, if, if marrying early was so common, why did Muhammad himself firstly wait till the age of 25 only to marry a widow that was 40? Then, secondly, the other issue is that it doesn't make any sense for getting a young child married to a guy who's in his 50s in an era where life expectancy isn't the greatest. So you're setting the child up for a relationship that is very unlikely to last long because the guy's going to die pretty soon. And when the guy will die, the family will be left without a dad, most likely, because the wife is going to be too young. OK, she'll have two, three kids, but then the guy is going to be 16. He's going to be dead soon. And before Islam, we have civilizations upon civilizations who recognize that too early of a child marriage is actually very dangerous to women's health and the women themselves because maternal mortality, i.e. women dying during childbirth, was a leading cause of death in women throughout <laughs> history. And the younger you are, the harder it is, right? So those civilizations actually had higher ages stipulated like 12 14 15 and some certain points 600 years before islam was around yeah and that was like the legal that wasn't the norm exactly and well we also see that if you do look at the cases in history we see this one thing uh is that the big leaders that did marry these very young children they were also not the norm. They were the exception. Like these king that was 50 or 16 married this 12-year-old girl in the what, 15th, 16th century. Mm -hmm. He wasn't still the norm. He was still the exception to the rule. Yeah, exactly.